Struggling to land a job in 2024? Well, you're not alone. It really is a sh time to be applying, but there's still jobs to be had. You just have to work that much harder to find something. Maybe that means taking a temporary pay cut from the job you previously were laid off from. Maybe that means taking a job that sucks, but pays the bills. Regardless, this has been my experience applying to tech jobs over the years and recently applying and landing a pretty sweet gig. Maybe it can help some of you realize what you're doing wrong in your application process or interview process. I wanted to make this video a few months back but I had to wait because of the shit storm that ensued after I was offered two different positions in December. If you're in the Mad Hat Discord, then you probably know what I'm talking about. But if not, watch till the end to see me rip into this shit company. But yeah, honestly, how I approach applying to jobs hasn't really changed over the past three years. I found a system that works for me, and as the old saying goes, if it ain't broke, keep fucking doing it. First, let's start at the beginning. In the beginning, beginning. With my first MSP Tier 1 Technician job back in 2019, I had zero work experience besides four years working for customer service at Target and TJ Maxx. Obviously, I put that on my resume just so I didn't look like a lazy piece of sh**. In addition, I added my Associates of Cybersecurity, which was a transfer degree, which is same thing, really. It's a two-year degree. No certificates, and I listed a bunch of quote-unquote skills that I had acquired over the two-year degree. Looking back at my email history, it only looked like I applied to 10 jobs before hearing back the same day Welcome. that I applied to a job You've got mail. that I eventually landed. Simpler times, right? I applied to nothing but tier one technician jobs and ones that I felt qualified for back then, which wasn't much. During the interview, they asked a lot of questions about virtual machines and networking. I remember asking if I could write on the whiteboard to explain how they worked. I think I drew a box within a box and I said that VMs are kind of like a safe enclosed environment that you can run operating systems that is kept safe by the hypervisor. And then I elaborated a little bit talking about type one and type two, bare metal versus hosted hypervisors. Basically one runs off of hardware and one runs off of the existing operating system. And they were wowed by my confidence and personality. <laughs> Honestly, the four Cisco classes that I took in my two year degree probably are the reason I landed that job. So get a CCNA if you want to get a tier one technician or junior networking position. Now this was for a 15 an hour fully on site with a one hour total commute. My bare minimum for staying at any job is six months, so I don't look like a total flake to my next possible employer. So that's what I did at six months. I was out of there. Fast forward to August of 2021. I had just made millions of dollars running my e-commerce business during the peak of COVID and following a change in iOS tracking that completely f***ed the advertising tracking metrics, I found myself hot on the job market again. I had a mortgage, several outstanding business debts, and sales had hit an all-time low. Probably the second darkest time in my life. The weight of attempting to make the business work and provide for my family was weighing heavy on me. We were at a point in our COVID forbearance agreement that was coming to an end, and we were facing potentially losing our home. But in true Mad Hat fashion, I tried to hack the job market. Unfortunately, it had been so long since I've done any exploits that I had forgotten the most reliable method and sadly went for the low and slow tactic commonly seen by APTs. Except I wasn't an advanced persistent threat. I was fresh off the boat from College State University and was still drunk off of the false promise Kool-Aid that I had drank for four plus years. I applied to probably less than 100 jobs, ranging from technical support to system administrators to security analysts to penetration testing. My dumbass thought my degree was enough to land me a penetration testing job. Ah, how naive. I mean, stupid I was. Now my approach during this time was straight up Googling for jobs and going through the job description to make 100% sure that I could do this job. I had six months of MSP experience and I spun the e-commerce work and moving job into something IT related. It's not lying, it's just stretching the truth. Just have to use your imagination. As you can see, my resume was lean. Leaner than I was having gained 40 pounds over the stress of running my own business. But surprisingly, I actually landed a few interviews with several places, including an associate product security analyst with Boeing. A new word for Boeing after a Delta flight lost a wheel just as it was about to take off this weekend. Whoa. That was close. And an MSP offered me a job starting at 23 an hour, working fully remote. The interview, I honestly didn't remember anything technical at all, which is not surprising because of how low the bar to entry was for them. It was kind of pathetic, actually. I just explained my background, my bachelor's in cybersecurity, and my previous MSP job, and they were like, awesome, you got the job. Red flag, 
run. Not bad for applying to only 100 jobs, honestly. Fast forward to my burnout with the MSP at the end of 2022, and I found myself pretty much in the same job market we have today. I honestly didn't experience anything different two years ago, and you'll see why coming up. Now, following a very helpful heart to heart that I had with my ex coworker who had quit before I did, I took his advice and I went balls to the wall. And I brute forced the sh out of the application process. If you've seen my first video ever on this channel, I apologize. It was shit, but it does go over what I did. Now I challenged myself to apply to 1000 jobs and that's exactly what I did. My resume didn't change much actually, except I took my ex coworkers advice and I stretched every truth imaginable on my resume without crossing the line into lying, of course. Our actual title was service desk analyst, but as some of you might know, it's important to label your previous positions with the position that you're trying to get and the position that you're applying to. So I was now the security analyst at our MSP. A justification and explanation of the work that I did that would even remotely sound like a security analyst position was working off of security related tickets that came in like potentially compromised computers or accounts or phishing emails. That's security, right? So the expectation being that if you're gonna take this hyper aggressive and outright mad approach to your resume, you better have the balls to back it up. Pull out everything security related that you did in your job and prepare to go over it during interviews. I'll never forget what my coworker said. You have to portray yourself in your resume and your interviews in a way that aligns with the perfect candidate that they're looking for. If they're looking for a Charizard, then you best ditto your fucking way into looking like a Charizard. That means putting something on your resume you don't have much experience with, but can learn before the interview, then do it. After the 1000 applications, no one called me and I gave up. Nah, <laughs> just kidding. I got multiple interviews and eventually I got one offer for a security position as a security analyst. And I was in the final round for a government job that was really just a glorified desktop support technician. The security analyst position was fully remote starting at 28 an hour. Desktop support position was fully on site, a two hour total commute, but it paid 80K salary to start or 38 an hour, but it was desktop support. So I had to very quickly decide whether I wanted to go into the security analyst position or pursue substantially more money. And since the security analyst position was for an established Fortune 500 company, it was the obvious choice at the time. And I figured that I could gain the experience I needed and then pivot my way into a better position at a different company, as is the name of the game in tech. And that's exactly what I did because they didn't give me a raise after one year. I was making peanuts, guys. I mean, look at this. Get it, there is a darkness inside of me. It wants to get out, wants to walk around. It wants some walking around money and it wants to buy some shoes and it wants to it wants to walk up with the people and say, hey, Gator don't play no shit. You hear, you feel me? Gator never been about that. Never, never been about playing no shit. The work I was doing aligned with all the security analyst job listings that I was seeing. And I just got the CISSP. I mean, come on. No raise after a year of busting my ass and doing over 50% of the ticket queue and getting a pretty popular senior cybersecurity certificate. Something told me that I could at least get a job that pays, I don't know, 25% more. Diapers, food, video games, don't come cheap folks, and I desperately needed more money. So again, I hit the job market in September of last year with my shiny new resume. Now I figured I didn't have to go crazy with the applications because I had some serious experience with security tools and I thought my resume showed that. But also, sisp. Nice. I applied to a few hundred, this time strictly to security analyst positions, and I waited and I waited and waited. Crickets. Everyone either denied or ghosted me. What did I do wrong? Was it my resume? Did I have to tailor my resume more? Do I have to optimize for ATS scanners? Do I have to sacrifice a goat under the blood moon? I felt confused. I was very down on myself. And this is right around the time when I released the burnout video. I was, I was not in a great place. That hurt, you know? And I think that just, that flipped this switch in me where I was like, okay, Fuck you, watch this. I doubled down, I fixed my resume. 100, 200, 500, 800. I applied to everything. 
Indeed, ZipRecruiter, Monster, LinkedIn, I was not going to stop until I was getting interviews. I was getting recruiters reaching out to me on LinkedIn and via email. I lined up five interviews for various security positions, security analyst, security consultant, DevSecOps, and the interview process went from what is the CIA triad to explain your day-to-day. -day. After explaining my day-to-day -day at my current position, I'm fairly certain they just skipped all the memory dump questions that most entry-level security positions tend to ask. I was given scenario questions like how would you respond to a confirmed compromised endpoint? Or how would you go about investigating an alert in your EDR? Well, I nailed two of them because I got two job offers. Both were for security analyst positions where the work sounded perfectly aligned with what I know how to do. Both of them were remote. One was a government contract job starting at 80K or 38 an hour plus benefits. The other was a contract to hire job that paid 40 an hour but it didn't have benefits to start. And as everyone should do if you're ever in this situation, I put them into a bidding war for me. I told my current employer the situation, hey boss. and I gracefully allowed them to join in the bidding. And chaos ensued. The government job bumped up their pay from 80K to 82K. The other went up to 42 an hour, which is roughly 87K salary. I went back to the other guys and they countered with 89K, but it was their final offer and I had to let them know by the end of that day. I was like, Damn, son, where'd you find this? I went back to the other guys and they were like, let me ask, cause I'm just the recruiter. I got an email back saying that it's still 42 an hour, but after being hired on permanently, that I would be getting a raise to 105K plus, and they would have the same benefits the government job had. The obvious choice here was the long game. You always play for the long game. So while the government job with benefits and PTO included would make my total compensation over 100K already to start, I'd be making a fair bit more after six months with the other company. Meanwhile, my previous employers were taking a nap, taking their sweet time. I gave them a call and my recruiter was like, oh sh let me call my boss. This was a good two weeks after I had already initially told him about the situation I was in. And he still hadn't reached out to his boss? For f sake, man. So I got on a three-way call with his boss, who basically implied that he could get me to 40 an hour, which was the initial amount that I had told him two weeks ago. I was shocked, honestly, because I was making 28 an hour. If they could do 40, I might just stay there, since I barely did any work, and the work I did do was very easy. A day goes by and still no word from them. <laughs> Meanwhile, I'm thinking to myself, what's stopping them from giving me a raise and then canning me on the spot once they find a replacement for me? The answer is nothing. Nothing is stopping them. And it's a red flag that I didn't get a raise at the one year mark after busting my ass and they didn't really seem to care that I was going out of my way to further my education through certifications. I was just a fly on their wall, an insignificant blip in their existence. I took the 42 an hour contract gig and I put my two weeks in. You, 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 you're cool, and you, I'm out. I was finally feeling good about myself. I felt that I had proven to myself that I was capable and I knew what I was doing since I was able to obtain two job offers. And I was excited to get my hands on something new. My last day was set to be the Friday before Christmas. And I gave myself an additional week off before I started my new gig. Things were looking up. I could finally stop my side e-commerce gig that I needed to pay the bills. Then on my last day of my two week notice, I get a call. I'm really sorry, I haven't had this happen before, but uh, the job offer has been rescinded. What? I tried to understand what happened. The only explanation that they'd given me is reevaluating finances for the new year. I'm like, why the f was that not reevaluated before you put me through four interviews? A Fortune 500 company, bigger than the one that I was currently at, and they can't get a handle on their hiring process? And on top of everything, they decided to do it on my last day of my two week notice, just before Christmas? I even emailed them asking, what the f in business etiquette, of course, and I heard nothing back. They just straight up ghosted me. I reached out to the other job offer. I didn't end up hearing back from them till after the new year, where I was told that the position is already in the process of being filled, which makes sense because it had been a few weeks since I told them I accepted another job offer. And I had to call my current employer and more or less beg them 
to let me keep my job. Luckily they did, or I probably would have spiraled into a serious depression. And my boss was super chill about it all, saying he understood and he wishes he could change how the whole contracting thing works, but it's too many hoops that you have to jump through and it's gonna be many years till that could happen. So I thought there was hope that since I was now stuck there, that they could get my pay up to 40 an hour like they implied they could do. My recruiter said that he'd reach out to his boss again and see what he could do. Two months later, two months, I finally got a raise to 30 an hour. What the f What the f What the f is this world? What have they done to us? What did they do now? Now up to that point, I had held off on reapplying since I was hoping I'd get a substantial raise, but nope, I also didn't apply because I was still angry about the whole thing and trying to wrap my head around what the actual f had happened. Who does that shit? So I put all my pent up frustration and I played team fight tactics until I got diamond. <laughs> I could only get to Emerald one before the season ended. I applied to every job that I saw again, because what I have learned in this job market and really in any job market, you need to apply to everything and only bother tailoring your resume to the jobs that you actually care about, like CrowdStrike, Microsoft, Netflix, Blizzard, Blizzard, please hire me. Please. So all of you saying that you applied to a hundred jobs, come on. Really? There's thousands upon thousands of jobs being listed and filled and you just applied to a hundred? There's also thousands upon thousands of ghost listings that'll never be filled. There's jobs that are more entry level friendly, even though they're asking for the same qualifications that the mid to senior level positions are also asking for. You will never know how truly low the bar to entry is for any particular job unless you apply to it. Because people making these job listings don't know what the f they're doing or what to put in it. And you're even competing with AI automatically applying to these jobs. So after applying to 500 or more jobs, I lined up three interviews and all of them were for senior security analyst positions. One legitimately sounded like the director of IT when I was interviewing with them. They had in the past six months just started the process of building their security team. I was not qualified for that position and I knew it during the interview. What was strange is that the job listing was asking for things I was qualified to do and it didn't ask for very much experience. So I gave it the old college try and I got a rejection email the same day. The other two senior security analyst positions were for more MSSP style companies. And the interviews between the two was quite similar actually. They're asking what my previous experience was, what my current day-to-day -day looked like, how familiar am I with certain tools like EDR or scenario-based questions, like how I would handle compromised accounts or what type of detection rules would I prioritize when writing new rules for an EDR or a SIM. And again, I nailed the interviews and I was offered the jobs. One was for 110K plus 10 percent bonus based on performance at a true MSSP job that I was almost certain I was going to burn myself out doing tickets. And the other was for a 120K base salary with benefits, PTO, and more juicy stuff, which made my total compensation around 135K to start. Wow. I was shocked. The moral of this long ass video, maybe things happen for a reason. So fix your resume folks and apply to everything. Stop being lazy. And to the people that rescinded their job offer after four interviews, a start date, and having already started my onboarding paperwork, fuck you. How does it feel to treat me like you do?